Justice Department issuing an appeal to overturn a federal judge's ruling which protects Apple from unlocking an iPhone in a New York drug case. This says Apple squares off with the FBI over iPhone encryption as it relates to the San Bernardino terrorists. A new Wall Street Journal NBC poll shows Americans are divided on this debate between privacy and national security. 47% of voters say that they are worried that the government will go, won't go far enough in monitoring terrorist suspects' communications, while another 44% say they're worried the government will go too far. Joining me right now is Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance. Good to see you, sir. Thank Maria. you so much for joining us. Thank you. Make the case. You have how many phones right now that you need to get into to complete these cases around drug peddlers. Since October 2014, when Apple re-engineered its phone so they could not be opened with a court-ordered judicial warrant, we now have 205 cases just in our cyber lab alone. It doesn't take into account the NYPDs uh, for which we've gotten search warrants from a judge, but we cannot access because of this device default encryption that Apple has installed. It's pretty extraordinary that we need a, a company to do this rather than law enforcement having the ability to get the information that, that you need. It's not unusual looking back that uh, when the government conducts an investigation, it will issue subpoenas or search warrants to get information relevant to the criminal case. So uh, Apple decided, however, uh, to change its practices that it had used prior to 2014 and actually open the devices in response to a search warrant by a court. Now they say they can't because they engineered their devices, so they cannot. Maria, you've been speaking about this as a national security issue, and I don't debate that at all, but I'm here really as the Manhattan District Attorney and speaking on behalf of local and state law enforcement all over the country. 95% of the criminal cases in the country are handled in local jurisdictions, rape, robbery, murder, child abuse, identity theft, as well as in my jurisdiction, terrorism. The inability of state and local law enforcement officers to be able to access the information in these devices, which we know criminals are using to communicate, and know that the criminals know we can't get in, is going to have a, and is having an impact on our ability to do our job. Apple speaks on behalf of its customers. I want Apple to speak on behalf of the customers who are victims of crime, who may not have a path toward justice because we cannot get access to the information necessary to do our job. Yeah, and Bill Gates weighing in on the case uh, yesterday, showing sympathy for the government side and the debate, but says a balance also must be kept uh, between the two sides. But how do you get this balance? Let me read you something that Apple, uh, that Apple CEO Tim Cook wrote. He writes in that letter to customers, if the government can use the All Writs Act to make it easier to unlock your iPhone, it would have the power to reach into anyone's device to capture their data. It could extend this breach of privacy and demand that Apple build surveillance software to intercept your messages, access your health records, your financial data, track your location, even access your phone's microphone or camera without your knowledge. Two responses. First and foremost, the court is issuing these search warrants. The prosecutor doesn't write a search warrant and send it out to Apple by him or herself. We have to go to court. We have to convince a court that there's probable cause that evidence of a crime is on this device. The court makes that decision, and if the court agrees, that device should be opened. And we, the court, this process has, has been used to gain access to homes, to bank vaults, uh, to cars, uh, to any area where crime, criminal evidence is believed by the court to exist. Apple engineered the first warrant-proof device in history. Now, I think it is uh, an attempt yeah. to have a, uh, you know, have, a, have a device that will sell well, but first and foremost, it's the court, not the prosecutor. The second point is that Apple, up until iOS 7, right preceding the introduction of iOS 8, which is the default encryption device software, Apple was promoting iOS 7 as secure and uh, also was promoting its ability and its responsibility to work with law enforcement to gain access to criminal investigations. Yeah. What changed? I don't know whether it was a, uh, a security issue or a public relations problem, but we need to solve this, and what I believe we need to do, Maria, is have the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Congress uh, exercise their responsibility. Mm -hmm. Apple has decided on its own with Google that it's going to draw the line between public safety and privacy way over here where it happens to coincide with their economic self-interest. I believe that the decision of how government can access these ubiquitous devices is only going to be decided by independent legislators mm. having a debate on this, making a decision. We have to move forward. You want Congress to move. We had General Michael Hayden on the show earlier this week. 
He had some uh, he had some important comments about it as well. I will say he was siding. He said he sides with Apple. Listen to General Hayden. And I think Apple is technologically correct when they say doing what the FBI wants them to do in this case will make their technology, their encryption, overall weaker than it would otherwise be. So I get why the FBI wants to get into the phone, but we make trade-offs like this all the time. And this, this may be a case where we've got to give up some things in law enforcement and even counterterrorism in order to preserve this aspect, our cybersecurity. Is there a broader trade-off here that we're giving something up if Apple allows the, the, the government to force them to create this new software? Well, Maria, again, the government through the independent analysis of courts has been gaining access to evidence over the last 200 years guided by the Fourth Amendment. There's really nothing new about this. What is new is that Apple has created a technology, full disk default device encryption, and then created a right to privacy around the technology that they created. At the end of the day, whatever the general says, what I would say is let me understand what to tell victims of crime, mothers whose children were murdered, who want that case solved, women who were victimized by sexual assault. We can't just look at this through the national security lens. We have to look at it through a national lens of which national security is just one problem. And in tens of thousands of cases this, a year around this country, uh, access to devices is going to be made impossible uh, because of this, uh, of this default disk encryption that's been created. We have to find a middle ground, and I'm looking to the United States Senate uh, and their calm leadership uh, to try to move this off, off home plate. Uh, look to the House to also play, play a role here. It, my own view is prosecutors and those people who are worried about crime and crime victims can't do nothing. Right. We have to do something. It's really an important case. We'll see how it develops. Great to have you on the program. Maria, thank you. And by the way, I want to say Manhattan DA's office is doing a great job, and I want to give a shout out to the police as well, because when I hear these attacks on the police and the first responders who put themselves out there every day uh, for people, it, it gets me upset. So shout out to all of your men. We, we are women. very lucky to have the best police force in the world. I know it. Cyrus Vance, Jr., thank you so much, thank sir. You. We'll see you